there's big news about Vatican Museum's tickets and tours for 2024. You'll want to follow along so you don't miss out on seeing the Sistine Chapel on your terms. At the end of this video, I'm going to tell you the best ways to visit the Sistine Chapel with the smallest crowds and the least amount of stress. As many of you are aware, 2023 set records for tourism in Rome and other parts of Italy, and they are expecting similar numbers for 2024. And in 2025, the Vatican is set to celebrate its Jubilee, a once every 25 year tradition begun in the year 1300 when Pope Boniface VIII decreed the first one. The last Jubilee was in the year 2000. So much has changed since then. Some of you will remember that Pope Francis celebrated an extraordinary Jubilee of Mercy in the year 2016, but it was nothing on the scale of a regular Jubilee. The Jubilee lasts all year long, so 2025 is expected to be another strong year for tourism in Rome. In part to prepare for the Jubilee in 2025, and in part to mitigate some of the tourism crowds that we saw in 2023, the Vatican has been implementing some changes. In this video, I'm going to go over all of these changes and what it means for you when you go to book your visit. Hey guys, if you are enjoying this video, would you please go ahead and hit that like button and please consider subscribing. Thank you so much. A couple of quick notes about what is not changing. St. Peter's Basilica is not really making any changes. You can still visit it as a church. It's still free. You still have to wait in that big security line, and I do have a video about how you can avoid the lines at St. Peter's. Most of this video has to do with changes at the Vatican Museums. I'm coming to you on January 1st, 2024, and these changes are taking place as of today. The first piece of great news is that the hours of the Vatican Museums are being extended. The Vatican Museums are now open from 8 a.m. Monday through Saturday, as opposed to 9 a.m. when they were open previously. Closing times are being extended as well. The new standard closing time will now be 7 p.m. as opposed to the previous closing time of 6 p.m. On weekends and other busy dates, such as around Christmas and Easter, the Vatican Museums will close at 8 p.m. Last entry is two hours before closing time. So when the museums close at 7, last entry is at 5 p.m. And when they close at 8 p.m., last entry is at 6. This means the Vatican Museums are no longer going to be offering extraordinary Friday and Saturday late night visits because now you can visit the museums later on weekends and even during the week. I loved the Friday night visits and I know many of you did too, but I do not believe they are going to be bringing this back anytime soon. In more good news, another thing that's not changing is that on the last Sunday of every month, the Vatican Museums are extraordinarily open and free. Now, as before, the Vatican Museums are closed on Sundays and religious holidays, but on the last Sunday of every month, everyone can visit for free. The museums are open that day from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. with last entry at 12.30. If you've been watching me for a while, you probably know I'm not a big fan of visiting the Vatican Museums on the free Sunday. Like any other free visit in Rome, the free Sunday at the Colosseum, etc., you can just expect long lines and big crowds. But if it's your only option and you really can't go any other day, just try to get there as early as you can. In other great news, they are keeping one of my all-time favorite tours at the Vatican Museums, the Extra Time Tour. I have a video about this, which I'm linking to in the description below, so you can watch to see what is included in this tour. I'll also be talking about it a little later in this video. Because of the extended closing hours at the museums, this tour, when it's offered, is going to be offered one hour later than it was previously offered to adjust for the new closing time. This tour is not offered daily, it's also not offered during the months of January and February. But if you can get on this tour, you will not be sorry. If you don't book the extra time tour, but you wanna have happy hour at the Vatican Museums and they don't have the late Friday or Saturday uh, aperitivo tours anymore, you can still book aperitivo or happy hour inside the Vatican Museums on the Vatican Museums website. And if it's not too busy, you probably can even go to the Pinecone Courtyard and have an aperitivo without booking ahead as long as there's space for you. Speaking of Vatican Museum's favorite tours, my other favorite tour besides the extra time tour is the Keymaster Tour, and this tour will continue to be offered. In the description below, you'll find my video where you can see what the tour is like. There's also a link where you can book this tour directly with Walks of Italy, as I did. One big change coming to the Vatican Museums is that they will no longer be offering tours going at supposedly privileged pre-opening hours. I'm not referring to the Keymaster Tour that I just mentioned. I'm referring to the tours that used to have authorization to enter the Vatican Museums before the museums open to the general public. 
The Vatican museums themselves even offer this type of tour, but this will no longer be available. With the museums opening Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m., the idea is that anybody who wants to go early and visit the museums can do so. Tour companies will still offer early bird tours. Walks of Italy has confirmed with me that they will continue to run their pristine Sistine tour with the same itinerary and the same schedule. The groups meet at about 7 a.m., they go inside at around 8 a.m., the difference now is that anybody else who wants to go in at that time may do so. I think and I hope that now that they have longer hours every day and throughout the week, maybe the crowds will be a little bit more spread out. In any case, usually you'll find tourism sites most busy during the day, and if you go early in the day or late in the day, you'll probably find them a little bit less crowded. And just as the early bird tours are not being offered any longer, neither are the early bird breakfast tours. When you visit the Vatican Museum's website, you'll see that you can book breakfast at 9.30 a.m. You can also probably go on your own. When it's not too busy, you can probably just show up without booking, again, as long as there's space for you. And some tour companies may continue to offer a tour with breakfast, but there will no longer be any kind of tour with a pre-opening breakfast. Another change coming to the Vatican Museums is a cap on group size. They are putting a cap of 20 people on tours with outside tour companies. As for ticketing, there is a very big change coming. No matter how you book your ticket, whether it's through the Vatican Museum's website or a ticketing agency or a tour agency, and no matter which ticket you book, whether it's just an entry ticket or a tour, all tickets will be nominative. This means that your name is on the ticket, and when you show up to go to the Vatican Museums, you might be asked to show ID to prove that you are the person whose name is on the ticket. This is a system similar to one they've recently put in place at the Colosseum. In both cases, this is an attempt by these sites to thwart those aggressive touts that you sometimes see that try to sell tourists tickets at exorbitant markup prices. The bottom line is you need to be prepared to show ID when you show up for your Vatican Museum's visit. And as I mentioned in one of my Colosseum videos, this ID does not have to be your passport. Any official government-issued photo ID will do, even a photocopy and even a copy on your smartphone. Now this is not official, but it is my sense that they will probably be conducting random spot checks to check IDs as opposed to trying to check every single person's ID. When you consider that 30 to 40,000 people visit the Vatican Museums every day, I think it may be too onerous to check the ID of every single person walking through the door. And while this may not be exciting ticketing and tour news, the Vatican Museums has announced that they will be expanding and upgrading their air conditioning system throughout the museums. Before we wrap this up, and before I share with you my tips for seeing the Sistine Chapel with the least amount of stress, I have a small update to share with you about archaeological sites at the Vatican Museums. When you visit the Vatican Museum's website, you'll see that there's an option for booking tickets to archaeological areas. Now this has nothing to do with St. Peter's tomb, that is managed by a completely different entity at the Vatican. I've done a video about that and it is linked in the description below if you want to know more. However, the Vatican Museums are offering guided tours to two underground sites that are not new, but that are newly organized with regular openings. First of these is the tour of the underground of Santa Maria Maggiore, one of my favorite churches in Rome, and one of my favorite underground sites. I have a page all about Santa Maria Maggiore or St. Mary Major on the website. It is linked in the description below. So if you want, you can find out a lot more about this papal basilica. This tour that you can book of the archeological area of Santa Maria Maggiore on the Vatican Museum's website is really a bargain in my opinion. You not only get to visit the underground, but you also get to go up to the upper loggia where you can see these stunning 13th century mosaics, the supposed Bernini staircase, and so much more. I think because it's little known, it's not the kind of tour that I think really sells out, so you should be able to get tickets to this pretty easily. Usually, you can also buy these tickets directly at Santa Maria Maggiore itself. The next new underground site that you can now easily book on the Vatican Museum's website is the tour of the Vatican Necropolis at the Via Triumphalis. This is an amazing site. It's so well organized, well lit, and easy to visit. The site is enormous, but you can see it all in about an hour and a half, which is how long the tour takes. There are only 20 to 25 people on this tour, and only one tour can go in at a time, so it's a very tranquil and relaxed visit. I'll have a video specifically about this tour coming out soon, so stay tuned. I've also heard some sort of news that they may be making changes to how you visit the Papal Villa at Castel Gandolfo, 
if there are any changes, I will be sure to update you. And of course, you can always count on me to bring you updates anytime there are new tours or changes to existing tours. And without further ado, here are my tips for the best way to see the Sistine Chapel. As you might imagine, my favorite way to see the Sistine Chapel is with the Keymaster Tour. Yes, it's pretty expensive, and yes, you have to get up very early, but it really is the experience of a lifetime. And if you can swing it, I highly recommend it. My second favorite tour, and in my opinion, one of the best ways to visit the Sistine Chapel is by taking the Extra Time Tour. One of the benefits of this tour is that you go into the Sistine Chapel as regular visitors are leaving. Another benefit of this tour and it's a huge one, is that the guide is able to explain the Sistine Chapel inside the Sistine Chapel. It really is one of my all-time favorite experiences in the Vatican Museums, and I really recommend it. And if neither of these tours work for you, then I recommend taking the Pristine Sistine or similar early morning tour. Even if the Vatican Museums are opening at 8 a.m., these early morning tours are still worth it, in my opinion. Finally, if a tour is not your thing, but you really want to have a good experience seeing the Sistine Chapel, here's what to do. Book your ticket as close to closing time as possible. So during the week when the museums close at 7 p.m., book your entry for as close to 5 p.m. as possible. Pace yourself, they really start kicking people out around 6.30. So you'll want to be in the Sistine Chapel at that time. As the guards are shooing people out, just stand there and look around you and enjoy what you're seeing. Ignore the guards until they get a little bit close to you and start saying, you know, you really have to leave. But until that time, just enjoy this beautiful space. I guarantee you, if you stay long enough, you will feel like you are all alone inside the Sistine Chapel. In the description below, you'll find links to all the tours that I've talked about. And for more about visiting the Vatican, check out my playlist right here.